Hey guys, so today is a bit of a perfume video and I'm sure this is going to be super fun to film because this is my winter perfume picks for this year. Um, some of them you've seen already, a lot of them you've seen already in my rotation previously, of course. Um, I have a very, very hefty perfume rotation. So really what you're going to see here is a pretty sophisticated, in my opinion, of course, this is my opinion only, selection of winter scents um, that not everybody wears. So let's start with a classic of the classics, and this is Opium by Yves Saint Laurent. Please understand that this is not the current release of Opium that is like ultra sweet and, and toothache inducing for me. This is the Eau de Toilette of the original Opium. When we we're talking about the spice heaven here. Uh, there is gypsy fire going on. There is lots of spices, bricks and barrels of spices. There's some woods and some, um, some floral, some probably myrrh, frankincense is powerful in here. It's insanity of vintage spices. It's gorgeous. Um, I will be giving a very short description and filming separate videos for them later because I can't possibly do a full review of a perfume in like a few seconds. It's impossible for me. Uh, so please expect a more thorough um, description later on. But here's an overview of what I'm suggesting for, for winter time. Uh, very winter appropriate fragrances. So this is just a craze of spices. If you're into spicy fragrances, if you're into something like um, Calvin Klein Obsession, which is gorgeous in my opinion, this is kind of where we're going with this. It's, it's very interesting. Um, people ha haven't been wearing spicy fragrances and you're going to definitely stand out if you do like it. There's a certain amount of... Uh, of citrusy zing to it as well. It's a very interesting fragrance, very complex. The composition is incredibly complex. Um, another spicy kind of fragrance with lots of clove, um, but much more wearable is Coco by, by uh, Chanel. And this other parfum I've been wearing for years and years and years, like maybe 10 to 15 years I've been wearing this fragrance, obviously not this bottle, but I'm repurchasing it constantly. It's one of my absolute must-haves for winter and I will never step away from it. Um, this reminds me of an, this is an extremely sophisticated scent. Uh, this is beautiful. It's an absolutely gorgeous, sophisticated, classic, spicy, sweet floral. Um, it has a it, it has a very nice and sweet base to it, but it's layered over with some vintage florals and the the gorgeous spices. Very wearable, um, very very powerful fragrance. So you really definitely need very little of it. But I guarantee you, this is super luxe. Um, you're definitely going to smell very sophisticated, elevated. This can elevate any outfit, like you know, t-shirt and jeans. Elevated. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, another Chanel fragrance that I've been wearing for probably a decade is Allure. And this is uh, the original Allure. Super wearable. I think this is a very lovely, very sweet fragrance. Again, I've kind of, you know, I've kind of said my share about sweet fragrances. This is the kind of sweet fragrance that I really can get behind because it's not just sugar. It's not just cheap sugar here. It's an absolutely gorgeous concoction of intoxicating vanilla. It's a beautiful vanillic fruity scent. There is the most gorgeous, the most ripe peach. Um, it's beautiful and juicy and edible and yummy. The vanilla is the fluffiest, most cozy vanilla ever. And it is um, a complete find in terms of just comforting, cozy fragrances. There is a lot going on here, but it's not an overwhelming, crazy, niche, sort of wrap your brain around it fragrance. This is very wearable, uh, very understandable and extremely likable. So I do suggest this is one of the easiest picks from the, the spread that I'll be talking about. I think this is super, super wearable, super easy to pull off. Another fragrance that I'm going to talk about is this uh, Tom Ford Velvet Orchid. Now, if you know my channel, you know that although I absolutely enjoy fragrances, it's my my favorite hobby, 
to keep up with. Unfortunately, patchouli on my skin usually is a rancid mess. <laughs> and so patchouli is a very difficult note for me personally. You know, if I have my opinions about sweet fragrances, yes. Uh, but I can't say the same about patchouli. I think patchouli can smell fantastic, just not on my skin. Um, so unfortunately, black orchid, I've, I've, I've had it. I've owned this perfume and I've sold it because it just was gross on my skin. I feel like it was suffocating and stale and horrible. And on other people, I can smell it and I can enjoy it, but on me, it was just bad. Um, I, I got both Velvet and Black Orchid, and I do find that Velvet Orchid is more wearable than Black Orchid. Um, it's a sweeter, boozier scent, very floral, um, still has a very healthy dose of patchouli, but it's far less suffocating, I think, than the Black Orchid is. So if you found yourself struggle with Black Orchid, I do suggest Velvet Orchid. It's a more gentle sister. They're definitely related, for sure. They share the same DNA. Um, it's absolutely obvious when you sniff them side by side, but Velvet Orchid is just easier. It's easier to pull off. It's more wearable, gentler. It's not as aggressive uh, as Black Orchid. And it's quite lovely. Um, this one, I think, is also a very easy fragrance to like, very sexy, uh, very uh, va 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 voom. So I'm sure limiting it to maybe either occasion wear or limiting the application to the very tiniest amount is probably a good idea. Also, it's a sillage monster, so it's going to, of course, suffocate everybody. If you do more than one spray, I wouldn't. <laughs> Unless you're going out, then obviously it's more appropriate to wear more perfume. Next two are natural and beautiful smelling woods. I'm sorry, the sun had come out. Um, first, I have to mention the classic of the classics. This is Samsara by Guerin. If you are a fan of classic fragrances, you would have smelled it already, I'm sure. It's a beautiful sandalwood. It's one of the most beautiful sandalwood fragrances I have ever come across, and that's why I recommend this uh, to be tried. It's, it does have a vintage vibe, of course. It is a vintage fragrance. It's beginning of the 20th century kind of fragrance, you know? So the composition is not of the popular kind. For instance, Alu is more modern composition, a composition that's very easy to understand. This is a little bit harder to wrap your mind around, but. The, the scent itself is gorgeous. If you like the smell of sandalwood, this is extremely high quality sandalwood and I do recommend that you check it out. It's very comforting, it's very natural smelling, it's very, very beautiful. And I think for winter, that rich, beautiful sandalwood smell is really very appealing. Um, then we have Fire, By the Fireplace by Replica. This one I've bought last year and I've spoken about at Nauseam as well last year, I've worn it quite a lot, although you can't see much of a dent, but this is an extremely concentrated fragrance that you need basically half a spray to last you an entire day. So by the fireplace is basically that. It's a very nice burning wood, woody smell. You, you can smell basically the fireplace, yes. So, uh, I recommend you try it out if you're into the idea of that kind of a really natural fire scent. If you like the campfire smell, this is fantastic, very realistic. Um, then we have two of the most expensive fragrances. They are a bank breaker. Um, this is probably about $400 and this is Black Phantom by Killian Momento Mori. Very, very beautiful new release by Killian. I will for sure tell you in a lot more detail about this fragrance, but this is also occasion where this is not an everyday scent. This is the booziest, sweetest rum. This is a party on a, on a, on a phantom, um, <laughs> black phantom, right? This is a party on a phantom ghost pirate ship. It's in, like, it's excessive. This fragrance is crazy. It's very complex. It is uh, boozy. It is drunk out of its pans. It is uh, just it's crazy. This scent is really insane and there's lots of sweet honey in it. Very sweet scent. One of the gorgeous sweet scents though. It has so much to say. It's tripping over itself trying to say it. It's, it's excessive. It's, uh, it can be too much. So again, use with caution. But this is a huge amount of, the star of the show here is definitely a huge amount of spiced 
beautiful, sweet rum and honey. There is some woodiness to it. There is some florals. There's, it's everything under the sink. It isn't here. It's, it's insane. This is crazy. If you are into niche fragrances, if you're willing to spend the money, this is an, a true gem. If you like sweeter fragrances, it's incredibly complex. Very, very interesting. And just, you know, this is, this is a huge party in a bottle. Giant party in a bottle. Um, the last one is a little bit more, more sophisticated in terms of what, where you can wear it. You can wear it to work. I think this is an all occasion kind of fragrance. Depends on the dosing. It can be very sexy if applied a little bit more heavy, heavily. Can be more subtle if applied at the, the very smallest amount. And this is Tom Ford Tobacco Vigny. Um, also this is from the exclusives line. So obviously very expensive, but I think this one is completely worth it. I received it as a gift from my husband my one birthday ago. Uh, it is absolutely a gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. It is incredibly simple. There's not a huge amount of stuff going on here. You know, if this is a huge messy party in a bottle and it's incredibly, incredibly complex, this is much more subtle, a much more elegant, much more reined in, edited version of a, of a really rich scent. Um, and there's cherry tobacco here. Um, this this strikes a memory of maybe like a, an old library where people used to smoke cherry pipes, uh, leather chairs, you know, some the wood that, that is the shelving and the ladders and the super high ceilings and everything just smells like old world wealth. <laughs> it's beautiful, very expensive smelling fragrance. Very elegant, very um, intelligent. It's it's very beautiful, but it has an edge to it. An ed edge of uh, maybe some sex appeal that is extremely intelligent and very intellectualized. Um, you know, th this couple, they will discuss... Uh, I'm not sure what, maybe Robespierre's works or, or Voltaire, I don't know what they discuss, but they, this, is, this is a very intellectually stimulating kind of scent. With all its simplicity, I think it's very well tailored and it is well edited. Um, so, like I said, if you want spiciness, I would recommend this for like insanity of spices and Coco for slightly vintage, beautiful, cozy spiciness. If you want fruity florals, then these are the ones that I would pick. This is very wearable, Allure from Chanel. Very, very wearable, easy to, to, you know, to style with whatever it is that you're planning to be in. Like whatever environment, it's going to fit any environment and it's very, very cozy as well. The vanilla is yum. This is a little bit harder to pull off because of the copious patchouli and extreme amount of um, sillage, the florals are kind of a, a little bit more aggressive here, but it is a beautiful, sexy scent. Um, if you want something very natural and woody, these are my picks. This is a vintage pick, very beautiful, very realistic sandal. What if you want fireplace, get by the fireplace um, for a crazy party, very, very luscious and luxurious experience, go for by Killian. And for if you want a, another very luxurious experience, but a little bit more down to earth, I would go for Tobacco Vanille by Tom Ford. Again, sim simple, but it's a jam. The quality is up there. So um, these are my winter picks for, for this season. I hope it was fun for you to watch. It's uh, quite a nice selection, I thought, and I grouped them into little groups. Um, tell me, what is your pick for this winter? Um, and what is on your wish list? I'm interested to know. That's it for today. See you guys later. Bye-bye.